started. I'm Tom Busby, and uh, thanks for coming tonight. Got a little bit to talk about, and we'll get things going. Hello, Simone. All right, DTI, Diversified Trading Institute. We're located in Mobile, Alabama. Who's ever been to Mobile? Now, when it comes to risk, I do it a little bit different than um, most people. I just do an arbitrary $300, and I do it the following way. If I'm trading stocks, that would be $3, $3 on a stock. If I'm using uh, futures, like the E-mini, I'd use six points. And if I'm using options, I would use uh, you know five to two. So what I have found working with my students that it's a real simple way to keep their losses small when they have them. So the $3 of risk is what we use. Here's a bit about my background. I graduated from the University of Georgia. Uh, I went to law school at Oklahoma City uh, University. I served as an officer in the United States Air Force. Uh, Vice President Smith Barney, and here's one of the things I'm really proud of, is back in the early 90s, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange had decided to start a program uh, to evaluate electronic trading, and they called it the Globex program, Globex Termit, uh, ETH permit holder, and I got one of the machines. And so I was right on the fronting, front edge of electronic trading, and uh, it was neat to have that Globex terminal. I used to tell people with only one between Boca Raton, Florida, and Houston, Texas. So a lot you learned back in those days. I, I have three books, Winning the Day Trading Game, The Markets Never Sleep, and Trade to Win. And so if you would like an audio copy, uh, fill out this little small survey. Adam, can you fill out that survey or have him post that survey and let him fill that out? If he'd like a audio copy, we'll send it to him of Winning the Day Trading Game. There you go. It takes about two minutes. Uh, DTI, we've been around a long time. Been uh, teaching since 1996, and um, you know we just basically say what we're going to do and do what we're going to say. Things I learned uh, many years ago, and I think I think people respect that, and we have a good community of traders. There's a picture, a picture of our building. It's bricks and mortar. Actually, uh, we do classes inside there, and it's located uh, right here on the lower coast of uh, Alabama. And um, we moved in there in 2001. All right, tonight uh, we do have an app that you can download. It sort of lets you have our software that you can monitor it. But uh, we also send out, uh, we push out different market insights about the market and event reminders, and it's really the roadmap on the go. So if you ever have seen our software, this is a way to follow it. It sort of, uh, you know, depending on what you're trading or what you're doing, it gives you a, a, a picture that uh, makes a lot of sense rather than just a number. And if you fill out the uh, roadmap profile, we're going to give you a couple tapes, Overcoming Fear in Trading, 7-Eleven uh, Rule. This is something that I, that I came up with this year that uh, after all the years I've been trading, it's really very helpful for determining the trend in the market. It's a 7-Eleven count, and we teach that to you, plus the book, the audio book. And there's that survey. Also, this is something new that we started uh, this week. It's uh, where we're going to, where I'm going to put out uh, videos about the market. And uh, you know, with the technology now, it allows me to do it. So if you'd like to sign up to get these videos for 30 days, I'm going to beta test it, see how much work's involved, and and get some feedback. So you'll be in my beta group if you do sign up and. Uh, and you know we're pushing out to you every evening. All right, uh, I wanted to, you know I like this presentation because this is a presentation about 
I've been trading a long time, 33 years, and so there's a lot of things that I've learned that I believe can help you. And so let me go through these insights, and it's a little fun to do, and you might, uh, some of these you might already know, but uh, they will help you when you get in different situations in the market. The, and now this is the first one. Uh, on the first day of the trading year, what I do is I take a print copy of where everything is trading, and I use that and post it on my wall. This is the opening prices of the year. Let me give you an example how you can use it. Um, anybody ever traded Tesla? The stock Tesla, TSLA? If you look, Tesla was at $149.80. What we teach at DTI is that if you're above that yearly open price, you ought to consider being long. And uh, I think Tesla today uh, actually closed in 250. So that's an example. Here's another example. Uh, well, Apple Computer is uh, that's prior to the split. I think it's about $79 a share. Apple's very bullish. Um, the NASDAQ, 35.57 up about 400 points from where we opened a year to give you an idea of how strong the market's been. So this is some of the things. Look at crude oil. Open at 98.50. Crude's trading at 84. That's $14 below where we opened in January to give you some idea of how, how far and fast crude has fell this year. But anyway, I do this the first day of the year, and I suggest that you do it. In fact, if you'll send Adam an email, he'll send you a copy of the one I have. And just post it up there. It's real handy during October, November, and December when you're trading. Now, we're trend traders at DTI, and so when prices are trading at the highs, they tend to make higher highs. When they're trading at the lows, they tend to make lower lows. If you were looking at today, you saw the market, uh, the market never made a high. It just kept making low after low, and then eventually, close near its low of the day. And that's followed through tonight, too. We're down here at 1917 on the S&P. Now, if you remember, uh, this really this insight was really helpful back in 2011. The uh, market was traveling pretty high and fast at the time, and we, uh, we expected a reversal to happen around July. We got out of the market, and then... Uh, that was during the sequester time, around July. Market fell, fell something like 7%, I believe. And, uh, but this insight reminds you that look for a trend reversal about mid-year. Uh, here's one that, we're, uh, one that I've used year, year after year since I've been in the business. The story is, the first, uh, when I uh, first started in business, I was at Merrill Lynch. And... Um, and I had shorted Merrill Lynch stock. And uh, I remember getting called into, into the office, and the manager said, hey, we don't short our stock. And I said, and I remember saying, well, have you seen the way this company's run? Well, anyway, um, I had about all my money on this short position. And sure enough, Merrill closed over 100, went to 110 so quick, wiped me out. And then I studied it. And I said, man, this is something to look at. So all these years, I've known when a stock crosses 100, the odds are it's going to make it to 110. You can think of a lot of examples. Uh, Wind Computer, uh, or not Wind Computer, Wind, Wind Hotels uh, is one that we traded. FedEx is one that we traded. There's several that you can just think of off the top of your head. The first time it cracks 100, it goes to 110. Now, the DAX. Uh, You'll, uh, Cam will come on after me. He's going to be talking about Nadex. He took this insight and developed a strategy on how to trade Nadex with it. He'll talk more about that after me. But the 6 o'clock price on the DAX futures is the mo most important price for the DAX during the day, and it helps you forecast, okay, forecast what kind of day you're going to have. If you go back to this morning even, and you look at the DAX, it signals, uh, when we drop below it, that we might be a little weak today. Now, I didn't believe it, but it was true. This insight number five to six o'clock, tax number is something to pay attention to. 
I don't know if anybody trades the DAX. I teach a class around around the DAX, but it's pretty good when it is uh, used as a forecasting tool. Now, I started trading the Apple back at seven dollars a share. I've traded it over the years. If you're around me, I'll probably uh, at some time while you're around me, I will I will uh, get an Apple. Um, I've traded it all these years. I'm still trading. I traded it today. Apple computer. Now, the 24-hour market, the global market, a lot of people don't think of the market being open, especially when it comes to stock indexes. But stock indexes really uh, really are trading in Asia and Europe and, and then early U.S. and in the afternoon. And you can take, you know, like right now, for example, the NASDAQ index is weak. e minis weak right now, which is forecasting lower prices in Asia. And that's the way it's broken down time-wise. If you ever look at these times, uh, this is how those trends hold up from 5 o'clock to 3.30 in the morning, from 3.30 to 8.30. And I think the trading pub took this concept and uh, used to have all-night trade-a-thons, and they were doing following the global market around the globe. Then 8.30 to 12.30 during the during the day, that's New York, and 12.30 to 4.15. I always tell people, if you just do what the numbers tell you, you'll be fine. You can think one thing, but unless the numbers justify it, go with the market. News. A lot of news comes into the market. And um, I think today was a, a, there's some news out of Europe about interest rates and uh, people were on hold until the, that news was announced and then when it was announced uh, it was what they expected so it wasn't a big effect and then there was other news out there about uh, Tesla and yet Tesla fell out of bed. Economic data, here's there's 20 economic reports a year that you got to pay attention to. 12 of them uh, the, is the big unemployment non-farm payrolls. comes out around the first Friday of the month. Eight of them are Fed meetings, okay? Eight of them are Fed meetings. you got 20 different decisive data points throughout the year. Uh, that really changed the trend of the market. So you go to the Fed website, you find out the dates. I think we got two more this year, one in October, one in December. And we've got two more, November and December, uh, non-farm payrolls. And those are important. Anyway, you know, being on the trading pub and being able to talk tonight is sort of fun for me. You know, Morgan was the founder of it, and uh, these insights are sort of fun to do. But the economic data is being reported is always something to watch. Every Wednesday, you have a crude oil report. How about that crude oil? You know, crude oil today was down about two dollars. If you look at it tonight. You'll see crude oil is uh, up about 17 cents, about $84.56. So it's still, you know, still near its lows. Remember that insight? If it's making lows, it keeps making lows. Now this is one that if you knew about, uh, crude on the last day of the month had about a $3 drop. This is an insight that uh, we expect. And I learned this one from um, a friend of mine that received uh, production checks. And he told me they don't average the price of the production checks. They mark it to the close on the last day of the month. And he said there's a tendency for crude to sell off into that mark to the market. I thought it an interesting insight. The Model Three trade, or Model T trade, the trade we developed to uh, to take advantage of the Fed meetings. And 48 hours after the Fed, there's a real discernible trend there that you can trade. And we do it, uh, like I said, eight times a year. Now, here's one that uh, you go back to year 2000. I learned it, learned about it in 2000 when we had the Bush-Gore battle. That night, uh, it was pretty simple. You'd sit by, the, by your trade machine. And uh, when uh, Florida would say that Bush was winning, you'd buy the S&P. And when they'd say Gore was winning, you'd sell the S&P. 
I made, I think, like 40 S&P points tonight at that presidential election. And there's a lot of volatility that you can, you can do by just knowing a little bit about politics. So we have an election party every four years. So 2016, we'll have another one. But uh, it's, it's really a fun night to trade. Now here's one that's coming up. The day after Thanksgiving tends to have a high degree of, of upness to it. And uh, for years I, I, I read about that and I never could fi quite figure it out. And so then I figured out the way to take advantage of this insight was to get up a little earlier. So you got to get up about 5 o'clock Central Time and, uh, and take advantage of where everybody else wakes up and marks it up. Many a, many a day I've been done by 8 o'clock in the morning on the day after Thanksgiving. Always continue to learn. You'd be surprised. 33 years, it seems like uh, I pick up something that, that helps me become better at this game of trading. Uh, here's one. December uh, 26 to January 1st, best trading week of the year. If you think about it, most brokers and most people say, hey, nothing's going on. Uh, you don't want to be in the market and all that. But it's really the time to be in the market because the trend is a solid trend. There's not a lot of people around to change the trend. If you figure it out early in the week, you can have some real good last weeks of the year doing that. And uh, at DTI, we always make a big deal about it. And so it makes it makes it nice that this is one of our insight number 17. Now, when the overall markets have risen 2.5% during the session, do not go short. Today, does anybody know the percent that the index fell today? Anybody know the, you know, the percent it fell? about 2%. So you've got about another half a percent here tonight to see the market come down. And that's exactly what I'm, why I'm short right now because of that insight. I'm short and so I, I can expect about a half a percent down. So let's do a little prediction here, okay? If the S&P fell 2% and closed at uh, 1820, what's a half a percent or 95 and a half, 99 and a half percent times 1920. That'd be, uh, let's do the math for you. 1920 times 99.5. About 1910 would be an expected place that the market would find support tonight using this insight in reverse. Everybody got that math? I took 99.5%, which is another half percent to go in this 2.5% drop. Here's one that here's one that really comes in good. You know, if you're big on crude oil and you happen to own own a stock in the oil market, uh, probably not doing you a lot of good right now because they're falling out of bed. And you know, you might like the stock, might be a good company, but the, but the truth of the matter is, it's uh, not going your way, and you probably ought to step aside. I always talk to traders about being able to make decisions. You know, you can't be perfect, and you shouldn't try to be perfect. What you should try to do, what you should try to do is look at your decision-making process and make it a process to keep it, the motions to a minimum. But as you're doing that, you ought, to, you, ought to, you ought to make decisions and move on. Some are going to be good. Some are going to be bad. Taking profit sometimes is a hard decision. Now here's a way to, in your portfolio. If you've got something that uh, that's not moving up with the market, you've got a problem. And let's and you can use this in reverse too. Did people notice Apple Computer today? Even though the market fell 300 Dow points, did anybody notice that Apple Computer was solidly uh, strong? That's sending a message to you, and it's basically telling you it's going a lot higher. Use it in reverse. And this is something, uh, you know, you might have a great stock, but if the market has a sudden downturn that lasts, your good stocks fall faster. Because people take profits there to use for their losses. And I, learned, I discovered that, you know, years ago, and I thought it was a good insight to share with you. 
always take losses more quickly than profits. Sounds like common sense, doesn't it? Always use a stop. Again, you got, you know, you might have the greatest method in the world, you might be the greatest trader in the world, but everybody's going to be wrong. And when you're wrong, stop yourself out and reevaluate. And this is one that you hear a lot. Hey, you don't go broke taking profits. I think you do because you got to let some of these profits run. Give you an example. Um, Y'all remember when CBOT uh, came public? That was the exchange stock. Came public about $84, $85 a share. And everybody was saying, let's take profits on it because it popped up. I stayed with that stock all the way to the time the Chicago Mercantile uh, bought it out. It was about 225 at the time. And I always think about this insight here about how I stayed with that winner all that you know, year, year and a half, two years it was public. And uh, so when I'm in a trade, I'm always thinking about that. Uh, our software is unique, and it does give you all that. It tells you where, where to enter, where to exit, and where you're wrong. Big losses, small gains. Recipe, recipe for failing as a trader. Always, always look at your liquidity balance when you determine how much risk you're going to take. Uh, learning from you losing trades. I told you about the Merrill situation where I went short. I learned from that loss. And over these years, I've used that very opposite to make a lot of money. So when you lose, study it. Say, hey, why did I lose? What did I do? What could I have done better? This is a real problem in the electronic world because you got that mouse in your hand. And I say, you go click crazy. I've done it. Talk to people that do it. You got to control that hand of yours because it can get you in a lot of trouble. And this is one I always like to talk about. It's just some days, no matter what you do, it ain't going to be a good day. A lot of people today that probably was buying the market, a lot of strategies to buy the market today, when they were buying it, they probably uh, at the end of the day said, what was I thinking? All right, the DAX. We talked a little bit about the DAX from the standpoint that the DAX is a European market. It's a market that uh, I'm very familiar with. Uh, my story is, is that the Eurex Exchange came to America. I was selected to introduce it to uh, the retail population. I went around the country with them demonstrating DAX, DAX techniques, and about two years into it, they decided they wanted to focus on their institutional clients and let the retail go. I kept it up, and I'm still, as far as I know, the only one um, in America that teaches the DAX, especially to the degree that I do. I have a couple classes a month with it. I've been trading it since 2001. I love the DAX. If you ever, if you ever uh, get a chance to get to one of my classes, you ought to on the DAX. I think you'd enjoy it. What is it? It's a German index futures contract. It's traded electronically on the Eurex exchange, worth about thirty-four fifty a point. Uh, they only have a big contract. There's a symbol, and it trades from one a.m. to three o'clock Central Time. A little bit in Asia, light in Europe, all day in America. It's the largest uh, electronic exchange in the world. The DAX is the flagship index. Key times to trade the DAX. 2.30 to 3 in the morning if you're up. 5 to 7 is the time that I trade it. 9 to 10.30 when America's open. And then 2.30 to 3 gives you an input of what to look for. Let me give you, uh, I want to show you something real quick. This is sort of interesting. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me bring this up. Come back over here, see if I can do it. Let me know if you could see our software. Do you see our software? Okay, there's our software. This is the DAX. 
So I told you that you could expect this thing to go down about 1910. That's what the DAX is saying. If you look here at this last hour, market's still in a decline, and it sort of supports the theory that we're going to go lower. They'll open this at 1 o'clock tonight, so uh, you should have an opportunity to see it in action when you read about it tomorrow if you're asleep. I think the DAX is real good during news announcements in America. For some reason, I've got this feeling that they know about this news because you can always see the move in the DAX ahead of the move in America on American news. Just watching the tape. It's an accurate indicator. It's one that will improve your trading. And uh, it's one that sort of is a good forecasting tool for what's happening here when we open up our day. Now here's the DAX versus the S&P. If you look over in the left-hand side, you can see how the DAX is sort of ahead of the S&P early in the morning. And then on the right-hand side, you see the S&P mirror. Uh, it gets very thin during news, but you can use it as a forecasting market during news. And those trade other vehicles during news times. You know, I actually, I depend on the DAX so much. When the DAX is closed, I always feel like it's a holiday. Now, here's a newsletter that we developed years ago. If you go and sign up, it's free. This was my idea, like I told you, back in the day when I worked for the DAX and taught the DAX. And this newsletter is really developed into a great aid. Uh, for traders. So it's free. Sign up for it. Let me know what you think. It's really something to, to subscribe to and it's in your inbox every morning when you wake up and sort of lays out all the key news that's going to affect your market today. Alright, let's talk about the seven sisters. This is the way I look at the current market. There's the E-mini. It's 1923 when the slide was done, but you can tell that the month was 1961, week, week was 1961. Clearly, the market's headed lower. Now, a little background. At the first of the year, I told people that the first two weeks of October should be a, a, a real uh, week period, and we're seeing that through the 15th, okay? And so this is a buying opportunity at some point here I think after the 15th. So don't get afraid just because the market gets real bloody over the next four or five days, okay? That's what I believe. And every market's following that trend. The Dow, the NASDAQ, the DAX. Everything is pointing lower right now, which means that, which means that this buying opportunity is setting up great for the second half of October. And you need to understand that. The 15th is next week. you got a few days of pockets of weakness, and then this thing's going to get real strong. Because then you do the flip side, and I tell people that 2015 should be a great up year if you go back through the cycles. You know, Larry Williams, uh, I don't know if you follow Larry or, or not, but Larry is good at cycles. He believes that 2015 is going to be a gangbuster year. If you go back to 1905, it's averaged about 30% every 10 years on that year ending in five. Gold, uh, been a hard market to trade, but it's still bullish for the year. It's above 1,200. Uh, I think it's going to 1,400. I just don't know when. I'm long gold, hard gold, uh, and you know that's the only way I know to play it. Crude, weak and getting weaker. Let's talk about crude real quick before I go to bonds because I want to give you a number on bonds. But what if crude dropped into the 50s from here? What would that do for cost? It should lower a lot of cost, shouldn't it? I've been thinking what was going to be the big trigger event for this big year might be crude. 
Now bonds. How do you know that the how do you know that the selling is over? Write this number down. 139 and a half. 139 and 16. 139 and 16 30 seconds. When it goes below that, you can the the selling pressure will be over and we'll start rallying again. Remember that number. That's your number right now. All right, here's five stocks that I trade. Apple. Uh, today, I told people that it's going to have a lot of resistance between 101.50 and 102.50. We had a major position in Apple. We took 50% off between that price. We're still long Apple, and we got our gun reloaded. If it comes down to uh, 99 from here, I'll buy more of it. That's Apple. Google is a stock that uh, that follows the market. You could tell when it broke 570. That was a sign of weakness to come. Google uh, is something you keep your eye on for when the selling is going to stop. It's a bellwether stock. Netflix, this is a company that's done quite well. Uh, they got great products. Uh, I believe in about three or four days, you'll see Netflix uh, uh, you know, bottom out and go a lot higher. I think you can see 500 in Netflix by the end of the year. 500. That's 40 dollars from here. Amazon. I'm not trading Amazon, even though Amazon is very weak this year. It's been uh, this has not been a good year for Amazon. Tesla. There's my baby. If this stock goes to 262 and a half. Write that number down. I'll get long again. 262 and a half. Write that number down. All right, here's a special trade. So FedEx. Uh, I was long FedEx, and it got above 160. I sold out, doubled my money on the option I had. I just rebought it yesterday at 155. If it goes above 157 and a half, I'll buy more. It closed at 156 and a half. So let me repeat. I was long FedEx, took profits. I re-entered yesterday at 155. I'm looking to add more to this position above 57 and a half. Remember that number tomorrow. Tesla, this was played like a fiddle. I sold it at 265 today at the absolute top of the market. Uh, we bought it Tuesday and uh, Again, I'll re-enter if it goes back above 262 and a half from here. The Apple Leap, uh, I had 100% in this stock, and now I'm down to 50%. If it gets down to 99, I'll buy back my other half. If it goes above 102.50, I expect to see 104, and that would be my liquidation point for the options I have now, 104. All right, I really don't know what you're looking for, but I've been around a long time, so I put together a little special product for you tonight, and I called it the DTI Sampler, okay? What's included in it is some highlighted sessions this, you know, this next week. And so Sunday night, I do a planning session for the whole week. You'll be invited to it. Monday, we, we have Jeff Smith that does a commodities outlook, uh, strategic outlook for all the different commodity markets. You'll be invited there. We have an option, strategic option class every Monday. You'll be invited there. On Tuesday, you can get up early whipping and trade. You can also trade our old school trade, like that Tesla I did this Tuesday with the options. I'll do it this next Tuesday also, so you'll be invited there. And then on Tuesday, we have interest rates. If you're interested in interest rates, we have Steve Thompson, an expert there. You have a lot of diversified styles here. On Wednesday, we have Nadex education with Chuck Crow. And then on Thursday, we have a review of the commodities and the longer-term trends for commodities. And then Thursday night, you'll be allowed to come to the night owl and see Chuck Crow lay out the second half of, of October in the sampler. So we've got a really really packed sampler for you if you want to uh, participate. Now, the weekly planning session. In this thing, I'll lay out the whole week. 
I look at the news, the probabilities each day, give you the potential trends, and give you three potential trades for the week on Sunday night. The outlook that Jeff does is at 7.30 on Monday morning. We tape all these sessions so you don't have to actually attend to, to get the benefit of it, but we'll tape it for you. That'll be on Monday. On Tuesday, or no, on Monday afternoon, we do the options. We'll tape that. And if you can't be there, but you get to meet Charlie Fent. And then early bird on Tuesday from 5 to 7, I'll be doing live trading on there, and you can be there to watch me trade. Tuesday at 8.30, we do a live trade. We also tape that one, and we educate about a strategy I developed for the first hour of trading. Interest rates at Tuesday at 11.30 by Steve Thompson. Nadex education on Wednesday, and you'll find more about Nadex uh, from Cam. And then we have a commodities update Thursday. So we've got a lot of stuff that we've laid out in this sampler to let you sort of, you know, see who we are and how and how you might want to get involved. And then of course we finish up with our pre-market planner on Thursday. We also included a video library: how to buy stocks, how to tell if stocks are going higher and where to pick the stocks from the herd, which ones to be in. We also have a fundamentals of options for those that would like to learn a little bit about options video. And then, of course, trading the futures market with a global perspective around the clock. Three great videos are included in the sampler package. The bonus, if you sign up for this, you'll get one DAX class with me on Thursday at 7.30 in the morning. That will also be taped if you can't make it, but it is a great class to get you exposed to that 6 o'clock number and the forecasting capabilities of what I talked about. Now, this is what our students tell us about the early bird. Talks about our customer service. It's how we've lasted 20 years, folks and the strategy and tools that we use, okay? Building that confidence and feeling good about what you're doing. The sampler package, first of its kind that we've offered here, $29 with that diverse styles and things, and it lets you kick the tires. So call 800-745-7444 to sign up or, or, just click that link and sign up, and we'll send you all the stuff and get you started. Any questions about the sampler package? Send me questions at tbuzz at DTI Trader. And I think everybody here can benefit from the knowledge that we packaged. And it's worth a lot more than $29. In fact, in fact, with next week being that key 15th of the month, uh, you might walk away with some information that helps you all the way into 2015. So next week's a key week in the market, a great week to have the sampler. Any questions for me, Yana, or anybody else?